Thank you. Well, thanks for coming. My name is Cesar Milan, and I'm here to share a little bit of my knowledge, which your dogs are going to be very proud of you after you leave. <laughs> So what is dog psychology? As we know, everybody has his own psychology. Giraffe have their psychology, elephants have their psychology, we have our own psychology. A lot of times we, we think dogs have human psychology and this is where we make our mistake because we humanize them. If we understand their psychology, even if we don't like dogs, we can control them by understanding their psychology because we're gonna know how to relate to them. And dogs are very simple, animals are very simple. We make it complicated for them by not understanding who they are and what they need and their language and how they create the behavior. They don't live in the future and they don't live in the past. We are the only species that lives in the past or the future. Yeah, this is why they develop issues because or we live in the future or we live in the past. We're not living in the moment. Dogs and any other species live in the moment. You see? And some humans, when they have a a dramatic thing in their life, they're going to now live in the moment. So meaning those humans who almost die. From that point on, the water is beautiful, the food is beautiful, you know, the wife is beautiful, <laughs> everything is beautiful. He's living in the moment, you see it? So one thing that I have learned from dogs is to live in the moment. So if somebody brings me a dog that just attack a human, I don't see him as that. I see him as a dog who needs some type of help but I don't see him as, as what he did yesterday because he didn't premeditate that. This doesn't mean dogs are less than human or more than human. What I want to bring today is awareness. They're just different species. And if we don't fulfill them as a species, they're not going to be happy. They're not going to have a balanced, centered life. Here's what I want you to learn about dogs. Dogs as animals. Dogs as a species, dogs as breed, dogs as personality, and my fulfillment formula. First, let's look at dogs as animals. Energy is beingness. Who and what you are being at every moment. It's extremely important to understand that when you meet a dog for the first time, you must learn to share calm, assertive energy. So if, if you don't understand what a calm, assertive energy look like, you can watch Oprah. <laughs> she is calm, assertive, right? So let's see dogs in their natural habitat without the human. So it's the mom, then the puppies. Now those puppies have to find a place within the pack. So that becomes their, their status, but they don't have a name like we do. Now the pack leader, the mother or the, or the male, is always going to project this calm, assertive way of being. They don't project nervousness, they don't project panic, they don't project tension. What they project is this calm, assertive energy. And this is one thing that is very common among all animals. Everybody in the animal kingdom follow calm, assertive energy. So regardless if it's a male or a female, it's the same energy. And the only time they get to meet emotional energy is when they come and live with us. We're the only species that follow unstable pack leaders around the world. <laughs> I'm sorry, human. <laughs> this is why they develop issues when they live with us. We have a different um, agenda for them. When they're puppies, we want to make them our babies. And so this becomes a journey for the human. And the human is beginning to fulfill himself from day one. And forgetting about what is important to them. This is the beginning of us giving control to them. Even if a two-month-old, a three-month-old, they know who you are as energy. Who you are is energy and activities. They don't know you as your name. They don't know you as your race. They don't know you what you have achieved in life. So if you're president of the United States, they don't know. What they know is the energy you share 
on a daily basis and the activities you do with them. Because they don't follow emotional leader, they don't follow lovable leader. They follow calm, assertive leader. See, the mother is calm, assertive when she's giving birth. See, so that's the first energy they experience. So you have to share calm, assertive energy before you share love. Love is a gift. We're going to be the only pack leader that loves them. Their pack leader will now create birthday parties for them. See, we're the only pack leader that show, that show that kind of love. Their pack leader will not reward behavior. He will not turn around and say, guys, thanks for following me 10 miles. <laughs> or the mother will not say, you know, kids, you behave so well today, let's go to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Dogs that live in America, they have shelter, food, and love. And those are the guys that become unstable because they're not working for food and water. Simple as that. So a dog needs to be told what to do every single day. Leadership is forever. Love is forever. But a lot of times we get a little lazy and we just do love, no leadership. Once you share that energy and then the mind goes into a calm, state, then you share affection. Then you share your love. Then you share your excitement. Make sure you provide or you create calm submission first. So we need to understand the energy is something that we have to consider before we adopt a dog, before we take a dog to us, because this is who are we going to deal with. We're going to be dealing with energy, then behaviors. So if you can overpower with your energy alone, and then they develop unwanted behavior. See it? Pack leader is energy. Pack leader is no sex. It doesn't matter if it's a male or a female. If the female is strong, she rules. Whoever owns two to three dogs, sometimes they own a very tough female, right? So it's not the sex or it's not the, the male-female gender, as she is a dominant one. And she is going to tell everybody. It can be two males following her. She doesn't see herself I'm a female, so you are supposed to follow you. No, I'm the dominant one. You guys follow me. So understanding calm assertive energy and projecting calm assertive energy is going to be the, the key of having a connection with our dogs, regardless of the breed. Now, let's focus on dogs as a species. I love to remind everybody about animal dog, animal dog. If you master this, you're going to have a, a, the connection that you're always dreamed to have, or, or you knew you're supposed to have that kind of connection, but because we come in this way, we are not going to connect the way they connect with each other. So we're going against Mother Nature. One of the things I learned growing up in a farm is never to work against Mother Nature. In our relationship, we have to understand that we have to fulfill each other's need, me as man and you as woman. In this case, we're same species, different psychology. Different psychology, the same species, different psychology. In a dog world, male or female, is the same psychology. They both follow dominant type. In the, in the human world, female is emotional first. In the male world, we are more psychological about things. And this is the battle that we always have. This is why we have to read some books about woman psychology and men's psychology. <laughs> See it? Otherwise, we're not going to be able to communicate and have a balanced relationship. Well, in the animal world, waiting is part of who they are. See, zebras wait, lions wait, crocodiles wait. <laughs> Shit, and they just flow, and wow, and get the zebra, right? But they have to wait to eat. They don't just get the meal by Federal Express. Here it is, it's a zebra. <laughs> See, they have to wait, right? Dog is part of the animal kingdom. Domesticated means they're not going to hunt for food. Doesn't mean they're not going to work for food. They work for food. So when they're little, they're working by waiting for the mother. They have to wait. So the mind, the mind is already doing a psychological exercise. Waiting is psychological. Feeding is a ritual. We ask the pack to work for food and water. And this is why we walk the pack before we feed the pack. They will not get fed if the mind is excited, nervous, tense, aggressive, or dominant. They get fed when the mind is calm, submissive. Whoever I want him to eat, that's who's gonna eat first. And guess who's gonna eat first? Him, because he's quiet. Daddy. 
Now you. Back. That's how they get fed. The mother makes them work for the, for the food in that case. And the mother never comes to the den, hi, babies, ha, 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 ha. He's so cute, baby. <laughs> Just my baby, right? Never. That behavior is only, only happens when they live with human. From that point on, we become that excited energy. This is why a lot of dogs do not listen to the human because the human becomes that excited source of energy. See it? The mother is never excited. Never. The mother is always calm and assertive. <laughs> right? So we feel sorry when we see a dog that is, that is under stress. Uh, all the dogs are beating him up. See, the dogs don't feel bad about it. They finish, and then they lick him. <laughs> you see it? And then they go back and play and do whatever they have. But they don't take it personal. See, we take it personal. And this is how we create traumatic experiences. So let me give you an example. One of the uh, dogs that I work in the show, a Great Dane, who was afraid to walk in shiny floors. This dog had a bad experience, you know, w uh, walking in the shiny floor. He hit himself against the glass, and it hurt, you know, the owner heard this boom. The owner came in, oh my God, are you okay? Oh my God. So this was the experience of a dog, right? If the owner can just come in to the, and observe that nothing happened, that would allow the dog to get up, shake it, and walk back again. But because she behaved this way, the dog became fearful to walk on shiny floors. If the dog had that accident without the human being there, that dog would never have a problem walking in that shiny floor. You see it? Because the human created that traumatic experience. A dog would have come and it smelled him, And then the dog would get up, shake himself, and then he, they would walk together to this side, or maybe they walk to this side. But they would never share this, this um, panic, you know, or this uh, feeling sorry about the dog. They don't share that. This is how they help each other. When people see a dog under stress, and they see a dog as a human being, the first thing they're gonna do is to try to share affection or sharing love or sharing food or feel compassion about what they're going through. But in the animal world, they don't nurture weakness. And if we do, and then we're nurturing the wrong state of mind. We will nurture instability. Let's talk about nose, eyes, ears. They're born with the nose open. About 15 days after they're born, they open the eyes. About 21 days after they're born, they open the ears. This is what I call nose, eyes, ears. So the mother is sent before sight, before sound. Their nose is the most powerful thing for them to relate, to connect. Their nose is like our eyes. If we don't see it, we don't believe it. So you can hear about a guy who can walk a pack of dogs, but you're not gonna believe it. You gotta see the guy and then you believe it, right? So a dog would not believe anything until he smells it. So he will not know anything about me until he smells me. So what is best for their balance is nose, eyes, ears, meaning you're not gonna touch, talk, or give eye contact. It's best for, oh! That kind of behavior is not gonna help the dog to see you and understand you in a better way. Now, let's talk about rules, boundaries, and limitations. Creating rules, boundaries, limitations, I, I believe that this is the hardest thing for a lot of people to, to, in, to create right away. So what do I mean? I'm, I'm going to give rules, boundaries, limitations to a two-month-old? Yes, the mother do. See it? The mother creates rules, boundaries, limitations from the moment they're born. We believe that we have to wait a year for a dog to have rules, boundaries, limitations. Well, in the meantime, he gives you rules, boundaries, limitations. <laughs> See it? So you can wait as long as, as you want he knows that you're not sharing rules, boundaries, limitations. So eventually, that's what we're gonna call rehabilitation because you have to rehabilitate the position you lost long time ago. So if you don't wanna lose position, if you have the opportunity to raise a puppy, make sure you follow what the parents follow. The mother makes sure they wait, and the mother makes sure she walks with them. 
and then she tells them how far can they go away from the den. Those are rules, those are boundaries, those are limitations. And then the mother would, uh, would allow them to experience uh, activities with each other, and when she disagrees, she comes and bites or carries them from the neck. This is how their parents right away share rules, boundaries, limitations. Without you setting rules, boundaries, limitations, they're not going to respect you. So rule boundary limitations gives you access to achieve respect. They need rules boundary limitations. Whatever breed they are, if it's a three-legged dog, one-eyed dog, the dog can't hear, they still need rule boundary limitations. Now, let's look at dogs as breed, how they are the same and how they're different. But they're all dogs. So a lot of times we get so caught up into, into um, the breed. Oh, all the German Shepherds are this way. No, no, no. German Shepherd is just the skill, it's just the cultural background. He's animal, he's dog. And if he's out of balance, it's because these guys are out of balance. Not because the German Shepherd, not because the name. So who they are is animal, dog, breed, name. The culture behind America love to come name, breed, human. A dog becomes a human. So we're going to use human psychology on a Chihuahua, on a German Shepherd, on a Boxer, on a Rottweiler, on a Mud, anything. Anything. You see it? They're all going, uh, even, you know, mixed dogs or Mutts or well, however you want to call them. They develop the same side effects as a German Shepherd. So it's not the breed. So do not focus on the breed when you're dealing with a behavior because that's not what it's coming from. The breed is just the skills or the outfit that they're wearing. It's how they look, right? Example, um, Siberian Huskies. They have the capability to travel for a longer period of time, but all dogs travel. It's just the Siberian Husky, as a breed, can travel for days. That's why it's hard for a Siberian Husky to live in the city, because there's not a lot of walk. Any breed can cause trouble, but the strongest breed will create bigger damage. And this is where I find a lot of my red zone cases. It is important to recognize the power of a strong breed. This is where the pit bulls come in. This is where the cane corsos come in. This is where the mastiffs come in. This is where all those big boys who are very, very powerful and they can lock on a dog and destroy it. But that's not something that they, you know, when they're little, they say, well, I we, you know, when I get older, I, I want to be in the news. <laughs> you know? Yes. You know, like human. A human would have premeditated, blah, blah, blah. But they don't. This happens because they're living with a human who just loves the breed but does not understand the, the, the animal and the dog. See it? So if you have a frustrated pit bull, it's going to intensify what they do. Come down. Emily, quiet. Emily is a classic example of a red zone case. And when pit bulls are frustrated, they're like gladiators. When I am in front of a red zone case, which is a dog that wants to kill you, then what I have to do is just put a leash on him, put rollerblades on me, and take that energy away from him. Red zone dogs is a, is a combination of frustration and dominance. Frustration from the lack of exercise, dominance because he controls the human in the house. So these two combinations create this. You can't stop them. So in order for you to talk to the mind, you have to remove the energy from the body. This is why the rollerblades help me so much. Because when I put my rollerblades and I ask him to move as fast as he can, Then I can say, <laughs> So anybody had any questions? How do I know if my dog is so out of control that I would need to seek professional advice? Well, it's best to look for professional help anytime you don't feel sure, right? So if, you, if it's something mild, a professional person should come and help you and put it together for you so you can start from the bottom to the top, right? Or at least to have uh, an understanding how to approach the behavior. So I guess you need professional help anytime you don't feel sure about a behavior.
Is you have to play the leadership role. And to control powerful breed, you really have to master the, the, the leadership. It's not just halfway, you know, leadership. You have to be 100% leadership because being the pack leader gives you access to control instincts and genetics. See, the pack leader controls everything. He tells them when to walk, when to rest, when to eat, who to hunt, which way to go. He says everything. And he doesn't speak and ask everybody, are you guys okay with my decision? <laughs> he just does. This is, how, this is how they behave. This is their language. This is their communication. This is how they create pattern behavior. It is no debate. It is no, do you agree with me? And a lot of times I see people talking to the dog, come on, let's go this way. No, y'all want to go this way. Come on. I'll give you a cookie after that. And the dog the whole time was smelling the grass. <laughs> you have a question? How does my dog show me he's the leader between us? Well, uh, it's actually very simple. If he jumps on you when, I, when you arrive home, he's the pack leader. Uh, if he walks, if, he, if you open door and he goes in front of you, he's the pack leader. If he barks at you and then you feed him, he's the pack leader. If you're sleeping and then he paws you, he's the pack leader. <laughs> so when, whenever he makes you do something, he is the pack leader. Simple as that. So when you, when you wake up on your terms, you're the pack leader. When you open the door on your terms, you're the pack leader. When you walk in front of that door, you're the pack leader. When you make them do whatever you want, you are the pack leader. And I'm not talking about 80% of the times. I'm not talking about 100% of the time. So if you give 80% of leadership, they give you 80% of followers. And then the other 20, they run the show. So you can't give space for them to lead you. We don't run the relationship with our dogs. Guess who's going to run it? The dogs. Because they require, in order for them to be connected, a pack leader. A big backyard is not a substitute for a primal activity like a walk. Even with a big backyard, a dog can still develop frustration. The energy has to go somewhere. So barking is a sign of this dog's not getting enough exercise. Excess amount of barking. Barking is communication, but normal communication will be woof, 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 woof. That's normal. That's a bark, but that's a normal way of telling you somebody's passing by. But See, that is a frustrated bark, right? So it becomes this way of telling you, I'm frustrated, but I'm not going to die with frustration. See, I'm going to release my frustration somehow, barking. Then your neighbor, you dog bark the whole time. <laughs> I know, something wrong with him. <laughs> and like, right away, they blame the dog, right? Yeah. So we don't take responsibility of what is happening to them because a lot of times we don't know, right? It's lack of information that make us blame them. Something wrong with me. I did everything, everything. I tried everything. You're the last hope. <laughs> Everybody said that to me. You're the last hope. So what have you tried, Bob? I gave him cookies. I, I changed the food. <laughs> I bought a new pillow. We take him to the park every day. And he's not changing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, <laughs> let me explain your dog psychology then. <laughs> Destructive behavior is, is a sign of this dog's not getting enough exercise, not being able to relieve this physical energy. So if you don't remove energy away from puppy, adolescent, adult, or senior, you just add in more energy to his being. So this energy, instead of benefiting him, his state of mind, is gonna create a detrimental state of mind. They're going to move very fast. You know, they're going to be wired the whole time. They're going to be... <laughs> You're going to come home, open the door. <laughs> You're going to have this. Shit. You're going to have this excitement. Why? Because you have not drained his physical energy. You have not challenged him psychologically. He's just in the back of the house. So when we come home, we open the door. You miss me? So we see that as the dog is missing us, when it's actually a dog experience a, a frustrated moment. So this can be cured or rehabilitated by us providing exercise. There are four levels of energy, very high, high, medium, and low.
This is Flirt, a Chinese crested, a very high level energy dog. You remember Emily the Pitbull. She's a high level energy dog. Kane, the Great Dane, is a medium level energy dog. This is Suki, the Chih Tzu, a low-level energy dog. So the race or the breed does not give you your energy. You are born with an energy regardless of your race. So the low and the medium are born to be followers, and the high and the very high are born to be leaders, more likely. Now, do we have high-level energy submissive type dogs? Yes, those are, ha those are the happy-go-lucky type dogs. They're always doing this. <laughs> See, eh? They go grab a tape, <laughs> and they go. And they, right? and they do the whole thing. They're always in that state of mind. But see, they're high-level energy submissive type. A high-level energy dominant type won't do things like that. You will see this. You will see tension from him. Because the energy, the dominance creates this approach. Submissive state of mind creates this. <laughs> Everybody says, so which one is the best breed for me? It's not the breed. Is the level of energy. So you have to evaluate what energy you are as an individual. So some people are low, medium, high, very high. And in all this energy, is going to be a dog lover in it. So if you choose a, low, um, a high level energy and your medium level energy, you automatically become a follower. So your energy is going to speak for you. So you have to make sure and be true to yourself what energy are you. My clients will come, and they're laid back people. I love my dog, but I don't know what's wrong. The dog's hold <laughs> <laughs> Hold it, This is holding the leash, right? And the, and the owner, and the, and the uh, human is just, I don't know what's wrong with him. But see, everything they do is, 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 is based on the energy that they're being. best for us to allow them to come to us. Do not come to the dog. Let them come to you, because that's going to allow them to do nose, eyes, and feel your energy. And if he wants something to do with you, he's going to rub himself against you. Or if he's going to nudge his head towards you, that means I'm ready to be touched by you. But a lot of people will reach to the dog when a dog is barely coming to them. And immediately it's a reaction from a dog. Or, see it? or they flight or they fight, or they ignore you, but they won't submit to you. And those are the four options, fight, flight, avoiding submission. Dogs will fight, dogs will run away, dogs will ignore you, or dogs will submit to you. See, submission is what, we, what I'm trying to uh, bring the awareness to achieve. So it's best for us to achieve calm submission, whatever dog we have, because that's going to allow him to meet the world. Caesar, uh, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you talk about fight, flight, avoidance, and submission, mm -hmm. what are the signs of those? But fight is a very simple, uh, it's very easy to, uh, to know when a dog is fighting. First of all, if you put a leash, they fight back. That's, that will be a manifestation of a fight. Uh, see, I'm not doing anything, OK? She's the one who's doing it. Or a dog who wants to move forward and attack dog, he's in a fight mode or a dog who is not willingly uh, submitting to their owner and is showing teeth or is snapping back at the owner or moving forward. See, it? that is a fight mode. When a dog runs away from situation, which happens a lot of times in fearful dogs, insecure dogs, nervous dogs, or panicky dogs, they rather run away from situation than move forward. Avoidance is when you're talking to a dog or you're having a communication with a dog, regardless body language, energy, or sound. 
the dog is paying no attention to you. He is avoiding you. Or a lot of times avoidance, you can also see it when, when you're coming to him and he just give you a circle. He's avoiding your presence, right? And submission is when they see human and they immediately go after the human. They say, oh, human approach, and dog relaxes. That's right. Oh, the dog goes in the back. That is a submissive mind. Yeah. Do completely um, submissive dogs need leadership roles, too? Absolutely. Well, that makes it easier for the, for the person who owns that dog. You know, he's, he, automatically, he's not going to try to go into front position. Right? But if they live with a more submissive person than them, they immediately become the dominant one. And this guy suffered more because they were not born to be dominant. You see it? Some are born to be submissive. Some are born to be dominant. So the guys who were already born to be submissive, which is most of them, see, it's only one pack, one pack leader for pack. So meaning there's going to be more followers than pack leaders. So that gives you access to not deal with a dominant state of mind. So yes, a, a submissive dog requires leadership because that's how he's going to stay submissive. If you don't provide dominance, he becomes dominant. Here's why I think the walk is so important. If we study dogs in their natural habitat, this is how they earn food and water. This is how they learn about the world. This is how they experience the world, by walking. Walking in front of a dog allows you to be seen as pack leader. If we don't learn to master the walk, our dogs will never relate to us in a primal level. But see, the thing is, animals love to travel. As an animal, you know, exploring the world, especially dog, they love to do it with their feet. A fish would like to swim. A bird would like to fly. You see? So a lot of times, dogs that live with homeless get to travel in no LA more than a dog that lives in Bel Air. <laughs> see, the dog that lives in Bel Air has a big backyard, but it's just a big kennel. Everybody loves to walk with a dog, but they can't walk with a dog they can't control. So the walk becomes an unpleasant activity. Lola, whoa, whoa, Lola, come back. This is a typical example Lola. of a dog who's in total control of the walk. Lola, come back. Come back. Where you hear the owner calling the dog many times and the dog pays no attention to her. Come on, Lola, come. Lola, come, come. And the walk gives them access to be balanced and connected and to explore the world. They don't want to go in a car. They don't want to take the plane. They'd rather walk than do anything else. So a simple walk is going to allow a dog to be in tune to you to the highest level of connection. This is why dogs that live with homeless people seem to be so in tune, right? <laughs> and it's a cat passing by, the dog didn't even look at the cat. <laughs> and it's a person with a flexi leech and the, <laughs> and the dog didn't even care, <laughs> right? Those dogs behave in a balanced way. Dogs that are on the leash, <laughs> this is the dogs on the leash, everybody. And there's a human in the back. He's so cute in the front. Hmm. Oh, not right now. <laughs> right? This is a lot of humans. This is a human. If you notice, if you study, you know, what I'm talking about, you're going to see that the human is in the back and the dog is in the front. And the homeless is in the front and the dog is in the back. Position means a lot. Most of the time, the owners are following their dog. But because the dog doesn't get in trouble, they say, well, there's nothing wrong with the dog, right? But that puts other people in jeopardy, especially the person who doesn't have control over their dogs, because those dogs will approach you. And if you become tense, nervous from that, it's going to be a barking contest or an attack motion. They can never be in front of you while they experience this world. Okay, so this way you're always in control moving forward. So when, you, when they see a deer, when they see a rabbit, when they see other persons with a dog, you have absolutely control to control the reaction right away. So a simple walk gives you the access to control any kind of breed. Now, let's look at dogs as personality. Personality is something that we create. It only exists in the human world. All right, so now we're going to talk about personality, which is everybody's favorite subject. This is the name. This is Billy. This is Max. This is Tommy. 
This is Lira, you know, this is, this is what we create. Personality is something that we create. A lot of people say, well, my dog loved to explore, so they name him Columbus because he loved to explore. So they came, they create this personality for him, and they give him this name of Columbus, right? But the truth is, all dogs love to explore. This is the truth. They all love to explore. So it's a cultural belief that dogs are human. In America, we believe dogs are human. Is this is good for a dog or this is bad for a dog? Well, it's bad for a dog. It's good for the human. A lot of my clients will come and say, you know, my dog is my soulmate, and my dog is my son, right? <laughs> but the dog wants to kill somebody, or the dog wants to, <laughs> you know, the dog just pulls her all over the place. And through her personality, she can't convince the dog, or he can't convince the dog to listen to her or to him. So talking to the name doesn't give you access to control the behavior. What it gives you access to control the behavior is energy body language. I want to explain the difference between conditioned skill and personality. Conditioned skill is what we do with their energy. Example, we want a dog to play with the ball and then he becomes really good at it. Doesn't mean he's a great ball player. That means we just condition him to release his energy through the ball. And through the ball, we can make him do other activities such as jumping over an obstacle or rolling over. This is not his personality. This is a condition skill. Personality is something that we create and it only exists in our world. In a pack of dogs, there are no personalities. In their world, it's only two positions, the leader and the follower. Now we come to the most important part of all, fulfillment. Even if you don't know anything about dogs or you have no clue about dog psychology, knowing how to fulfill dog properly would allow him or her to be balanced. We're moving animal, we're moving dog, we're moving breed, everything matters, but it matters in this order. If we don't follow the order, we're not gonna be fulfilling mother nature the way the mother nature is intended to be fulfilled. They don't need us to be balanced, we need them to be close to Mother Nature. We need trees, we need, see that? we need animals. They don't need the human to be balanced. So it's our responsibility to fulfill everything in them for them to accomplish balance. Don't forget the fulfillment formula, exercise, discipline, then affection. All right, so let's understand and apply the formula of fulfillment. Fulfillment is, is uh, being able to accomplish what animals need, which we talk about it, work for food and water. And in order for, to work for food and water, you need to move your body and use your mind, right? That's working for food and water. Peace of mind is being balanced. When you're balanced, you're relaxed, you're centered, you're in tune. And you don't have to be a billionaire to be balanced. You don't have to be graduated from Harvard to be balanced. See, Harvard is training, A, B, C, one, two, three. That doesn't make you balanced. What it makes you balance is being able to fulfill yourself the way you're supposed to have your life fulfilled, which is having exercise, good for the body, psychological stimulation, good for the mind, and love, of course. Those three ingredients are extremely important. I know this is gonna sound very simple, because it is simple. It's, it, can a walk bring fulfillment? You bet. It's very important for the animal to move forward. Right? And if it's moving forward next to you, what a better joy. Right? Because again, we're gonna be the species who's gonna be very proud of them. And it's gonna love it's gonna love them just by following us. So a simple walk can bring balance and fulfillment in our in the life of our dogs. But the way we like to fulfill our dog is love first, then exercise, then discipline. Or love, exercise, no discipline. <laughs> or Affection, affection, affection. <laughs> Using affection as the last activity, which for a lot of people, you know, this is like, what do you mean? You know, affection, the last thing? But I love them, he's so cute. And, um, and I just, you know, this is what I have a dog for. This is what I rescue a dog. But again, this is the human first. So we have to become aware that it's not about us, it's about them. Affection is more for the human than it is for the dog. And if you study dogs that, have, that work for the blind, you see that they have a sign that says not to give affection. By law, we can't touch those dogs. 
right? Why? Because at that moment, what they're doing is physical, psychological. So if you come and give affection, you're going to break the state of mind that he's in. See, dogs that come submissive, they can go anywhere in the world. Dogs that live with handicapped people go anywhere in the world. They can go on a plane, they can go on an elevator, they can go whatever. They can visit the president of the United States. They can go anywhere because the mind is calm submissive. And if you ever study them, you will see that they don't reward every 10 seconds. And those dogs are heroes because they do everything for those people. The beauty is these people will reward dog after they finish. You hear these wonderful uh, stories when they live with a person that is blind, when they live with a person that is deaf, somehow these dogs are magnificent. But when they live with a lawyer, when they live with an architect, <laughs> those are the guys that come to me. <laughs> so we have to understand that love is the last thing we're going to share in order for us to fulfill them first. Then we fulfill ourselves. Then it's a balanced relationship. Affection is going to be for us. Exercise discipline is going to be for them. So animal, dog, breed, need the exercise discipline. The name is for affection. See it? This is why I like to break it down this way, because these three guys need physical, psychological activities. The name is the one who gets the affection. This is something that we always have to keep in mind in order for us to always fulfill. Fulfilling is every single day. It's not it's Sunday, I'm not going to fulfill. I have to fulfill my wife every single day, right? I have to say, I love you. I have to say this. I have to listen. I have, <laughs> you know, American woman understand that her needs have to be fulfilled. So I got to get with the program. So I hopefully you guys get with the program with what dogs need. This is what they need, not what we need. Right? Because if I just do what I need, and then I'm fulfilling myself only. And a relationship is not about one, it's about two. In this case, it's human dog. You are human. He is a dog or she is a dog. When you begin with affection, more likely for you to be seen as follower or soft energy. Right? Affection can lead you into gain trust. Doesn't mean you gain respect. Exercise discipline gives you the respect you're looking for because you're respecting who they are. Who they are is a physical, psychological being. Then you share this love that only human shares. Pack leader will never share the love we share. We will never go to Petco and buy anything. <laughs> so your animal have to control his animal. Your species have to control his species. Your race control the breed, and your name control his name. Then everything about you controls him. So once we start re taking responsibility of what balance look like and, and how simple balance can be brought, especially human dog, then we're going to be able to have that connection that, we're, that everybody wants. Everybody wants to have that deep in love connection. But in love doesn't mean you're in a deep connection. And deep connection means when you fulfill that species the way they want to be fulfilled, and then you shower with the love. So a dog, to me, is a reminder of health. Dog to me is a reminder of balance. Dog to me is a reminder of alignment. See it? They don't need me to be balanced. They don't need me to be aligned. They don't need, they don't need me whatsoever. I really need them. You know? Yeah. They don't, they don't need human to be balanced. And this is why the formula that I follow, or the equation that I follow, is exercise, discipline, affection. Not affection, exercise, discipline, or affection, exercise, no discipline or affection, affection, affection. Exercise, discipline, affection. The body, the mind, the heart. This is what I want you to remember. Begin your day with a calm, assertive energy before you share emotions or excitement. Rules bander's limitations are very important for the state of mind of dogs. A simple walk has a lot of meaning in the relationship between your dog and you. Being in front of the walk allows you to be seen as the pack leader. Remember, dogs follow a pack leader. Don't forget the fulfillment formula. Exercise, discipline, then affection. We just have to share this knowledge on a daily basis, and you will see a change. You will see transformation that day. But in order for, them, for this to stay that way, it's like a diet. You have to stick to it. You don't lose weight just by reading the Atkin diet. I mean, you have to stick to the program. 
The same thing with dog psychology. You stick to the program, you see change. The more you do it, the more the dog, the, the more the dog understands that this is who you are now.